The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, good morning, boys and girls. Well, we're going to uh, start our session today with a free trip for everybody to New Zealand. We're going down under the land of the Kiwi, and we're going to take a look at the New Zealand dollar versus the U.S. dollar. I don't know diddly squat about the fundamentals, but I can tell you this. This thing is completing a major A, B, C, D, Gartley pattern going back several years. First, we'll look here at the daily. You can see from this chart that the patterns do fit in nicely uh, with what we look at, three drive patterns, Gartley's, ABCDs, uh, most of the currency, well, all the currencies will do that. But uh, this one is really ripe. It's um, right down to the level where we're supposed to be right now. The safe trade would be to buy it once it gets uh, above unchanged on the day. So you'd have to buy it 30 pips higher, but that would be safer because then you could put your stop uh, below today's low and you'd be risking uh, roughly 30 pips uh, if you're a uh, intelligent risk speculator and you don't want to wait till that long you could probably buy it right around this level and risk 30 or 40 pips from where we are right now but uh, it's got some real interesting uh, patterns now that's the daily and the other one we want to take a look at is we want to look at it on the weekly basis also and you can see on the weekly basis going back to 2010 that we are at the 786 retracement uh, of that move and uh, we are right where we're supposed to be whether that's going to be the case or not you know back last March when uh, actually, actually it was June when the market was making high up there at 88 uh, we happened to be in New Zealand giving a little speech and everybody said oh that could never go down and it was one of those times where technical analysis took over and it certainly uh, it certainly worked in our favor that particular that particular way we're having some pretty good volatility everywhere as we all know because of the fact that we've got the uh, uh, markets are jumping around a great deal because of the unemployment or super employment or whatever they're going to call it I don't know everybody's got a different name for it but we've had a um, uh, a big drop in bonds uh, right after the report uh, they dropped uh, two full points stopping right at the uh, 786 retracement and um, this is where I think we've got a chance here uh, to complete an ABCD pattern up around that 152 level. And that would give us a four-point uh, rally off of the bottom. And we should get a little bit more than that, probably around five points, I would think, uh, because the move was uh, so much to the downside. But that's what, uh, that's what it looks like right now uh, in, the, in the Treasury bonds. Now, the one chart that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks and weeks here has been the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index chart, and I think that uh, has told the whole story, and it's continuing to uh, read us bedtime stories because uh, this this uh, this stock market is in big trouble, folks, uh, from a technical standpoint. Uh, in my opinion, if we take a look at the NYA, the New York Stock Exchange Index, uh, you can see uh, after we had those three bottoms last week uh, and early this week, uh, the market rallied uh, a total of two days. And then just literally gave up the ghost, and uh, you know now we're breaking down quite a bit, and we're going to get we're going to be testing the May lows uh, probably sometime today uh, would be my my guess unless the market turns around here, you know before the market opens. But you know we'll have to wait and see. The the, the overall scenario of lower prices certainly looks like it's uh, it's uh, raised its head again. So you want to keep an eye on this uh, if you're long some stocks. Be really careful. The New York Stock Exchange Index, folks, could not even take out the high of last week at the 20, uh, on the 26th. Uh, that, that's a really negative sign uh, in itself when the rest of the market was, you know, either at the 786 uh, or uh, double topping. So uh, this is an incredible uh, view of what's happening with the market as far as, uh, you know, the uh, amount of uh, stuff that's going on with the selling. And if we take a look, I know you get tired of hearing this stuff, but I want to bring up this advanced decline line again because it's that. I think I am anyway. Uh-oh, I guess I'm not today. I didn't post it, son of a gun. 
Uh oh, got to get a new judge and jury, so we'll see what's happening. This whole process of what we're going through here, folks, is 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 due to margin debt, and we haven't even begun to see anything. There is no fear in the market. You can see the volatility index. No one really cares. I don't know what's going to come in here and scare the bejeebies out of these people, but something is coming. Uh, when we have margin debt 50 percent higher than it was in October of 2007, uh, that, ought to, that ought to just scare you to death uh, if you're long stocks. And if you look at all these patterns and you're watching the you know, the breadth of the market just go to pot. And that's what John Logan was talking about. It was very interesting to listen to his uh, dissertation on the uh, breadth of the market, you know, what was really happening to it. So we'll see. But uh, technically, it just looks like it's uh, hanging on by a thread. But those threads, like they say, if you weave a cable strand a day, pretty soon it becomes unbreakable. And this market has been incredibly bullish. The NASDAQ has been the leader you know, all, all along, and it's still uh, leading uh, to this day, and it continues uh, to go quite a bit higher. We'll take a quick look here um, at the uh, VIX index. Just give me one second here to uh, get that VIX index up here. I wanted to, to watch it because uh, I always listen to Basil's show because he uh, does the best job with the VIX index of anybody that I've ever heard, and I kind of coattail him, so I don't want to say anything of what's going on but you know yesterday we had a little bit of a move uh, to the upside but frankly you know they're showing you know absolutely no fear in the market at all we're not even uh, we're not even near the highs of uh, uh, earlier in the month we're basically made it yesterday we made a 78.6 retracement of that high now today today we'll probably be a little bit higher than that uh, and that might give it a, a chance to uh, start to move higher. But we've not really had any big moves like we had in December and in January. And also uh, in twice in January, we had those big drops in the market. And the, both of those were big buying opportunities. So these, uh, they're starting to turn, but nothing, nothing excitement has hit it. And that, that's not unusual because I think a lot of times, you know, when you made money in stocks and uh, commodities or what else, you get very complacent. And you just say, oh, well, it's a big sell-off. I'll just buy more on the way down. And pretty soon you have that old market ad. It's a good buy house, good buy car, good buy boat, good buy wife. So be careful of good buys. And the worst thing you can do in all of investing, I don't care. You can trade without a stop. That's even safer than this next rule. That is the single stupidest thing you can possibly do. That's not coming from Larry Pesavento. That's coming from some really smart people down the road in the financial circles, starting with J.P. Morgan, Bernard Baruch, uh, Jesse Livermore. Uh, all of these guys preach that, and especially Bernard Baruch. He, he said there was no greater fall fallacy in the world than to uh, buy things on a uh, you know on, a, on the way down. You can imagine uh, people with Enron. And, uh, you know, stuff like that. Or being stupid enough to sell Apple on the way up. You know, we're going to sell some at 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Sure, you might be right someday. And the paranoid man only has to be right once to prove himself right. But, uh, you know, you can lose a lot of money between then and now. So don't ever, ever add to a losing position, folks. That's, that's really, that's the worst thing you can do. The second thing you can do is, to, you know, not... Uh, to trade without a plan, I mean, some some type of way of getting in the market and getting out of the market. When you put the order in, that's when the trade starts. How do you manage it? You know, where do you get in and then where do you get out? Uh, one of my favorite uh, movies and my one of my favorite actors was John Derrick. And he played in a lot of detective shows back in the uh, 60s. And one of his uh, detective shows was called Knock on Any Door. In fact, this is where uh, the Navy SEALs, uh, get their motto, live fast, love hard, die young, and make a good-looking corpse. That comes from John Derrick's movie, um, A Knock on Any Door. But uh, Derrick, in the movie, he walked in, he said, every time I walk into a room, he was a detective saying, every time I walk into the room, I look for the two ways of getting out of the room. Either they're going to carry me out or I can walk out, but I want to know those two ways. So that's the same way with trading. You want to know how to get out of a market you know, in the old adage, you know, it's much better to be out of a market wishing you were in than in a market wishing you were out. That's another thing that you try not to get away from. Uh, we've got uh, gold and silver, which we're going to cover. They're under some real duress here. And I think we're going to, uh, you know, see gold go lower. Silver's broken the, the $16 level by just a little bit. 
In fact, we should take a look at that right now uh, because uh, I'm watching silver so closely. My suggestion is what I what I suggested was um, is to wait until uh, Monday. In fact, you can see right now that it's it's broken below the the magical 786 level. And uh, I sent this out last night because I, I really felt that it was getting ready to go lower. We're seeing, you know, selling in a lot of commodities, uh, gold and silver, copper, all the different things. But we're, we're below the 1603 per ounce level in silver, down at the 1598. Our low has been 1592. That sets up the next level, which is way down around 15. So you really can't do anything uh, on the long side here. Now, there's an ABCD pattern that is forming here. Uh, in the silver that that we should point out because that's one of the things that I that I wanted to see just get, get this out of the way here because we're not very far that comes in at 1590 that's why it's best to wait until Monday because sometime the ABCD pattern will uh, override the um, the Fibonacci numbers like 786 but not very often because most of the time the the fib numbers are far far more important than the patterns themselves uh, one, you know, one is the geometry of it. The other is the sacred geometry, which are the numbers themselves. And that's why I, I was taught that way from Bryce Gilmore, that that's really what you want to be looking at. So the last bastion of uh, support here in silver comes in at 1590 an ounce. Uh, that's the ABCD pattern coming off of the whole month of uh, May. And we'll know about that. Uh, any close below 1590 uh, today you can kiss it goodbye if you want to stop and give it a you know a wave as it goes by because it's going to go a whole lot lower, and the ABCD on this measures all the way back to a double bottom at 1520, excuse me 1420 and then below 1420, uh, you know it's going to be you know really uh, interesting to see. But let's just show you the long-term uh, silver thing because if we get there that comes into 1461, and you'll be able to see pretty much you know where we are. wait to, to see what's going to happen and we'll uh, we'll just wait and see you don't have to do anything right now we're, we're sitting in the same situation uh, in the gold market uh, we're having a um, situation where we've had a give me one second here to get the gold up we broke below the um, magical 1180 area which was our first sign that something was wrong and now we've broken below uh, the 1165 level and so gold also is in a situation where we certainly don't want to uh, be looking at it because you can see from this chart that I'm going to put up here in just a few minutes, God willing, you see that we're going to be looking at uh, a price of around um, 1150 and that's where we're uh, headed for in the gold market. That will be the uh, 786 retracement uh, of the move from way back uh, in uh, early, uh, late March. And that's what we'll be looking at. In follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. 
Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted into uh, Tiger TV the four hour chart, 240 minutes uh, of the E mini SP. And as you can see, today's low uh, in the um, before the market opened the pre pre the pre session uh hit the exact 61 percent retracement of the may 7th low to the exact sick the exact ticks 206 uh 75 and so uh so far we rallied about eight or nine points we could rally uh, all the way back up to two two twenty one twelve today and it would still be uh, bearish the only way this thing could be bullish now is if the market totally reverses and we close above the 2120 level and then boy that sets up uh, hot prices way up into the into the stratosphere uh, if that'll happen but anytime we go below the uh, the 2086 uh, level now it's a really uh, really a bad sign so it's a perfect Gartley pattern uh, starting from uh, the uh, the 17th of uh, May into where we are right now the $64 question is uh, will we get much more of a rally from where we are uh, or not? We'll have to uh, see how the market opens here in a little bit because putting of the New York Stock Exchange and then the selling comes in. Maybe if there's not much selling on the opening, the buying will come in and we'll get, uh, you know, a much bigger, uh, a much bigger rally. That could also uh, you know, be the case. In other words, the market could go up and the market could go down and it could also uh, remain the same. Uh, that's a, don't let that out. That's sort of a 
pri primary stuff that we keep here uh, at TFNN to not let anybody understand how the real trading works. That's what I'm looking at anyway. So we keep an eye on what's going on here with these uh, pre-market things. What really what amazes me more than anything else is the fact that these people, uh, they live and they die by these uh, numbers, uh, whatever they are, non-farm payroll. Give me a break, folks. We're there. See, we got 360 million people uh, in, the, in the country, probably 30% of the employed, not counting the old people and the, uh, the youngsters and whatever. So say 30, 35%. So maybe uh, we might have 90 uh, to 100 million people working. And they're talking about a number that's in the the 20 or 30, 100,000 range? I mean, that's insignificant. I mean, how, why, do, why do people, you know, buy into that stuff? That's what I don't understand, you know. Of course, I don't understand a lot of things, but that's one of the things I really don't understand. So we'll watch that, uh, you know, pretty closely down the road. We're making new lows now in gold. We're breaking down, uh, making 11, just broke 1164. Looks like we are going to get down to that 1152 level, probably get there today. But uh, it does look pretty bad. We're, we're seeing really bad um, numbers across the board on the, um, uh, what you call it, the... Um, uh, commodity, the commodity front, uh, with the exception of wheat, that's the only thing that uh, seems to want to go up. There's a big uh, short covering in the wheat market, but other than that, there's a lot of selling. Even crude oil, uh, we had that butterfly pattern form up at the 16150 uh, level the other day, and uh, you know we've sold off five dollars uh, a barrel uh, in the oil. So that's another one that looks, uh, you know, rather in rather interesting uh, from our perspective here. Okay, um, one other question someone asked about Tesla. Okay, give me a second here, and we can put this up before the break comes up. I haven't looked. I don't trade these stocks. I'm so busy with foreign exchange that I just don't really have any time. And, uh, you know, they're like watching butter melt anyway. So, yeah, so it's held up at that 252 level. That's pretty much where it was supposed to hold up, around 250. We're trading around 246 and change now. But it uh, doesn't look like it's uh, going to do, do very much from here. Let's just put this in here. You can see Tesla had a lot of resistance up in that 248 to 250 level, uh, especially the long-term 61% retracement. And so this is where we're setting with Tesla. Doesn't look, uh, doesn't look much different uh, than, uh, than I usually do. I have a really interesting story I want to tell before the break, and that is uh, uh, Winston Churchill on the uh, eve before the invasion of Normandy uh, called Dwight Eisenhower, General Eisenhower, and he said, I want to be on the invasion fleet. I want to be on one of the boats going into Normandy, and Dwight Eisenhower said, absolutely not. That's unacceptable. He said, you are such an important statesman that if anything would happen to you, it would destroy the war efforts. And he said, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go over your head, General. He said, I'm going to call the president. He said, you can call the president. He says, but I will resign before I let you get on that boat. And so the, the, the thing stopped, and what happened was the uh, the uh, – Let's get get my train of thought here. He called uh, Dwight Eisenhower called King George at Windsor Castle, and he told him he said, you know, Churchill wants to be on this boat. He said that cannot be. He said it's silly, and King George said you're right. So that night, King George called Churchill, and I'll tell you what he said right after this break. Got the opening coming up in a few minutes. It should be wild and wonderful as always. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technician's Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I was telling the story about uh, President... Uh, well, President Eisenhower, but General Eisenhower uh, called King George because Winston Churchill wanted to ride in one of the ships going into Normandy. And uh, Eisenhower told the king, he said, Your Majesty, he said, that cannot happen. He's too important. He said, well, I agree with you. That night, King George called the prime minister and he said, Prime Minister, he said, what is this hogwash about you wanting to ride into Normandy? And the prime minister said, Sir, this is one of the most important points in the history of London. It's important that the prime minister be on that boat. And the king said, you're absolutely correct. He said, if the prime minister should be there, then the king should be there with him 10 times over. He said, which boat would you like to be in? Churchill said, I guess we'll both listen to it on BBC. <laughs> 
I laughed so hard when I heard that story. I couldn't believe it. Art Cashin told that story, and it was really good. Let's get back to the markets here. Uh, we're looking at the euro versus the U.S. dollar. We've dropped at over 200 pips uh, since the report. Uh, we had just completed a head and shoulders pattern, as you can see here. Uh, at uh, with the uh, euro, um, this is one of those times where I was left standing at the gate because I had my order in to sell it at the 61% retracement at uh, 20, 112 uh, 90, 90, yeah, 112 93, and it got to 112 83, and then uh, they left the station uh, without me, as they do many times. But what we have happening now is that we're having our really first major correction here. Uh, from the bottom back on uh, the 27th of April, the 61% retracement comes in at 110.36. Now, the problem is with this long bar coming down, uh, you really need to wait uh, several hours. Uh, you'd like to see this not get there at least for the next two hours. And if it gets there quietly, then that knows that you, at least you have a feeling that the selling has, uh, at least the emotional selling has, has died down. That's the same situation that we have in that New Zealand dollar. Uh, that I posted early in the morning. You know, that thing has gone uh, lower yet. We're now down uh, about uh, th 30 pips from where uh, I was talking about it uh, early this morning. And, and, of course, my suggestion was is the, the smart speculator would be uh, let it to get back to positive on the day and then put your stop in under today's low, and then you would verify it. Because with those long bars, that's telling you there's a giant danger signal out there. And when that's happening, uh, you really don't have any choice but to uh, stand aside and uh, you know see what's uh, see what's going to happen with uh, with some of this stuff. So it is going to be quite interesting, no matter what. That's going to be a very interesting uh, phenomenon without any trouble at all. I, I feel that very very strongly about that anyway. So we'll see if that's going to continue to be the case. But we'll um, we'll wait and see if that's going to be the case. Hold on a second here. I have to put an order in just in case the market keeps breaking down more. I want to be able to add to some shorts, but right now I just want to wait and see what happens here, and we'll get an idea. We did go down and make a new low in the S&P down at that 2086 again, and boy, that is a that is one key figure, boys and girls. Uh, if we get below that, then uh, we are going to be in big trouble. We got the Dow down about 75 early morning in the first oh, 10 or 15 minutes, and most most of the Dow stocks uh, are not even uh, are not even open yet, so. We want to keep uh, keep that in mind. Uh, also, what we're what we're watching here, because of the way these uh, things jump around quite a bit, it uh, it can be interesting to say the least. Uh, let's review a few of the markets. We've got crude oil still under pressure. We've broken below fe uh, fifty-seven dollars a barrel, uh, down about two dollars. Uh, that's down five dollars now from its high. Uh, we got gold is down, I think, uh, $40 on the week. Uh, silver is down well over a dollar on the week. We've just got major selling coming in everywhere. And so we've got to be, uh, you know, be prepared to, uh, you know, handle that uh, from a deflationary standpoint because I think that's where the, the Fed has, uh, you know, Bernanke wrote his paper on uh, the depression because of deflation and he said that should never happen and that's what the fed has tried to do with quantitative easing but it's not really working that way and so you've got to be uh, you have to respect the fact that this is uh, could be really something really serious here and i i believe that we have the real problem folks is uh, in the debt market. That's uh, the first of all the margin debt. I posted that chart into Tiger TV and uh, that's you know 50% higher than October danger my god that's that uh it's just very very scary and when you look at it with the other things that are going on out there it gets very very uh, uh ominous out there for sure so you want to be uh want to be uh, careful of that no matter what so those are the things that i'm easily i'm keeping an eye on anyway uh, early this morning and we've only been open about 10 minutes in the stock market and we're we're down now over 100 in the Dow, so we're starting to accelerate, and we just broke the, the magical 286 level in the S&P, so we're probably going to be heading down uh, even lower. Once these, once these FIB numbers break, boy, that, that really uh, really tells you that you're going to be you know, moving in the, uh, the direction of those broken numbers, because if they go through 618, they usually go to 786. So we'll uh, just keep an eye on it as we're speaking here. We're making new lows by uh, a substantial amount. 
Um, th there are some tremendous uh, swings in the uh, the German stock market, folks. I, I would like to post one of these charts for you just to show you uh, some of the uh, things that happen. Uh, it, it's just truly amazing here. There we go. That's what we want to get this down a little bit more. Give me one more second here to get this done, and I'll be uh, up and ready. You'll see that we have... Uh, Okay, one second here. I've gotten orders coming in, so bear with me here. This is the I'm going to post the German DAX this morning, and you'll see that this is uh, this is equivalent to about uh, uh, 60 S and P points uh, going up and 60 S and P points going down. Uh, that's pretty much what you're looking at there. Uh, the high that it made this morning at 9:30 was right at a 786 retracement, and if you look at that closely, you can see the the three drive to a top pattern that was uh, forming at that time. Uh, it, it really does move around uh, a, a great deal. I mean, a great deal. <laughs> and it has some really nice patterns in today, but right now it's in the midst as you can watch it trade here. Uh, it is, uh, it is, I'll just repost it because it's dropped another 50 points since we've, uh, since we've, uh, you know, been going down. So that's the main thing that we're, that we're watching here. So we're, uh, we're starting to accelerate to the downside now. And uh, we'll probably continue that for the rest of the day now, given the fact that, well, you can't really say that because only the first 10 minutes of trading and there could be some buying coming in. But the overall uh, scenario with the stocks is so very, very weak that uh, you have to be uh, you have to just be just extremely careful being long, folks. Um, this advanced decline line that we've been talking about for the past weeks here has been deteriorating rapidly. Uh, Arch Crawford, our guest yesterday, talked about it. Uh, our guest on uh, Wednesday's show was Ed Carlson. He also talked about it. Um, uh, John Logan talked about it. Basil talks about it. I mean, that's an important thing because as stocks go up, there's no, there's, you know, the more people who want to sell and they want to buy, that's not a good thing, boys and girls. And when you got lower highs, and lower lows, that is a definition of a downtrend. And we're breaking major trends today. So the breadth of the market is going to be under some, uh, you know, real serious pressure, in my opinion. So whether um, the rest of the world sees it or not, I don't know. But I'd be really careful in here. That's uh, the main thing that I would be, uh, be focusing on for sure. That's, uh, that's the way I see it from uh, Tucson, Arizona. Actually, I'm not in Tucson, Arizona. I'm in sunny Philadelphia. So we'll see what's happening here. Okay. Okay. We'll see what we are. Let's see the Dow down over 100. And we got the NASDAQ down about 30. S&P down about 10, 12 points. So that's no big deal right now. It's still relatively quiet. Not too much happening. The bonds have rallied a little bit, uh, but haven't really, you know, given much oomph to the upside. I think we've got some more to go there. Uh, the soybeans. Uh, someone's asked a question about soybeans because I've had a real interest in beans for uh, quite some time here. And I'm looking to buy the pullback. Uh, we made a perfect 61% retracement uh, of the last high uh, last night. And we've been up five days this week. And I would really like to buy beans uh, probably uh, next week, maybe around Tuesday or Wednesday on a pullback. Uh, down into that uh, 905 level again. But this was one of those situations where you had everything lined up um, uh, perfectly, where you had the ABCD patterns and everything lining up. It just uh, was just set up uh, about as good as you can get, I think. And so we'll, uh, we'll see if this is going to be uh, a good place to uh, uh, buy beans on a pullback. Uh, wheat has been much stronger. Uh, it, in fact, it almost took out last week's high, missed it by about a penny, and it sold off about 13 cents. So uh, we want to watch beans really closely, folks. That's I don't know if most, most of you folks don't trade beans, but uh, that's uh, it's it's got a really nice pattern. As you can see here, it's got all the things that you could ask for in a trade. It's got the two major ratios going back the last seven months, the 127, the 1 1.618. It has... Uh, two ABCD patterns, it has two butterfly patterns, and two three drive to a bottom patterns, all on one chart coming into the 903 level. And our low was uh, 896, within six cents of that uh, exact low. So that's why we have our uh, eyes focused on this, uh, on this soybean, because it's got a real chance here to, uh, you know, to make a pretty significant move uh, if we do get, in fact, uh, that spot to, to take a look at it anyway okay we want to wait on gold and silver 
Uh, they're both breaking down. We've still got a small chance in silver, a small chance in gold, but boys and girls, it's small. Uh, I don't see uh, any reason why we're not going to hit 1155 uh, in the gold and at least uh, $15 an ounce in the silver. That would be my my absolute minimum of uh, looking at these things. So let's uh, just uh, keep that in the old radar and we'll see how the things uh, how the things line up. Um, oh, so. Well, don't tell me this again. Don't tell me this again. Okay. Folks, uh, we're on plan two here. We've uh, put the chart up for uh, IBM. And as you can see, it hit major resistance up there uh, at that uh, $75 uh, per share. The perfect Gartley been in the downtrend, uh, well, for several years. Three lower highs going back on the yearly basis. There's no reason to be long this stock. Uh, looks like it's going to go down to at least uh, – low 150s from this level. Uh, that's uh, what I see with the IBM, uh, looking at it from, uh, from that point of view. Um, the, uh, the other stock that we, call, we always talk about, uh, people always seem to ask about it, is, uh, of course, Apple. And uh, Apple has held up uh, you know, relatively well during this run here. It still has the potential uh, to go a lot lower, in my opinion. But if you really want an experience, folks, Call an Apple store and ask about a product. I mean, they act like you uh, are bothering them. Uh, you have to make an appointment. Uh, you can walk into the store, but they basically will warn you that you probably will have a two-hour wait. I, I've been in some of the malls, and I've looked in the stores. It didn't look like a two-hour wait to me, but that's neither here nor there of what I'm seeing, but uh, who knows. But uh, it's it really scares me when I see stuff like that going on. The consumer should be king and not the servant, but they got it wrong over there, and uh, we'll see if that's going to mean anything or not. We'll have to uh, let the uh, let the judges prevail on that. I don't, the only Apple product that I own is a Nano. Uh, I have all my Tony Robbins stuff on it, all of my music, and when I travel, I carry it with me all the time. I cannot believe it's the size of a half a dollar, and it is, you know, unbelievable. When I used to travel, I had all these CDs and stuff, and it was uh, really a pain, and now it's, uh, it's so much easier uh, to do it this way that it's uh, a lot safer. Okay, take a little break here, and we'll come back.
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex, up next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've had a request from one of our favorite listeners, uh, Mr. Benny in Atlanta. And what we've done is we've taken a look at platinum, and as you can see, we're making a double bottom here uh, on the daily chart. That's even a much weaker chart than we have with silver uh, and with gold, as you can see that. But the key here, uh, Danny, and if you get a chance, I certainly hope you get to take a look at this in Tiger TV. If you move to the, uh, the weekly chart, you can see that the price of platinum, once it broke the 61% retracement $100 ago at 1195 an ounce, uh, it had a great deal of reason to go a whole lot lower. And the next spot is another $90 an ounce lower at the 786. Uh, that's what it looks like uh, from my perspective uh, with platinum. 
Now, I'd like to uh, finish the show uh, with a couple of charts that I think are extremely important. It's ones that I started the thing with, and that is the New York Stock Exchange Index. You can see what's happened here. Uh, we've had a big break. We're now under the May lows, um, and so we are, we're, we're technically in a bear market now, folks. Uh, I don't see how anybody, uh, maybe the long-term guys uh, don't figure it out that way, but the short-term guys, I uh, certainly realize that that's what's, uh, that's what's happening uh, right now, at least from the uh, shorter-term perspective of uh, what's going on in the stock. It looks, it looks really, really negative. Now, if we take a look at this uh, New York Stock Exchange Index uh, on the daily basis, uh, you'll be able to see that we've broken down here uh, below the lows of, uh, of May, which is really a uh, very, very important thing to pay attention to. But the real key here, folks, is to look at the, um, the, uh, the low of May 13th. Folks, when we take that out, there is trouble in River City because that was such an important low. Uh, we talked about that many times. Uh, uh, Bill Ehrman from Ehrmanometry uh, pointed it out to us. Uh, it was just a really important cycle low. It was spot on, 61% retracement. We had three higher bottoms. And if we take that out, we are we are in such big trouble that I don't even want to um, even want to think about it because it's really going to be a, a big move to the downside. After we take that low out and then have a rally, then there's a possibility of one of those days where you have five or six hundred points down in the Dow. Uh, I don't think we'll see it from this level, but with the gap down today, uh, there's always that possibility that uh, you know that could happen. But uh, we'll. Wait. See, now, remember, we've got a real key time coming up here with uh, Mercury on the 10th. We'll have Norm Winston as our guest. So every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.